this was a revision midfoot arthrodesis first and second TMT joints um, that had a fair amount of uh, bony surfaces that we needed to pack the bone graph into. All right, so I'm marking out the uh, anatomy of the calcaneus. The two st structures you need to worry about, perineal tendon, sural nerve, um, you just need to stay uh, posterior, inferior to those. Um, the starting hole is well, well uh, placed a good distance from those um, two structures. I made here about a 15 millimeter incision. Uh, dissecting down with the hemostat and also feeling the calcaneus border with the hemostat to make sure I'm not going inferior or under the calcaneus bone. I have a pretty good idea of where the uh, calcaneus border is now, so I'm making my uh, starting hole. Here we are using the Avitus pilot hole creator. Um, this makes a one centimeter um, bone window. I'm going to start first around my um, opening uh, hole and then uh, I'll progress to uh, more parts of the calcaneus anatomy. I'm having my assistant stabilize the foot while I uh, obtain the graft. And since this is a non-powered instrument, you've got pretty good tactile sensation on where the tip of the curette is going. Uh, I think the risk of plunging through the medial cortex is minimal. Um, since this is all done by hand, not done by power, um, you can palpate, uh, if you need a lot of bone, you can palpate the extent of the cortex uh, immediately, superiorly, um, distally, down towards the calcaneus cuboid joint, um, inferiorly, down to the bottom, the calcaneus tuberosity, posterior to the tuberosity. Pretty, uh, pretty safe technique, and you can... Um, if you need a lot of bone, you can sp spend uh, the time, which isn't a great amount of time to uh, gather a, a significant amount of bone. It's nice also that the reservoir is translucent, translucent so you can see uh, how much bone you have. Obviously, you don't need to take more than you need. This is a manual technique. Um, the risk of uh, thermal necrosis to the bone or the uh, osteo... Um, plastic uh, cells is minimal. Once again, this is a uh, manual, low velocity, non-powered technique. Um, benefits, we also get the marrow with the suction device, so the bone quality and the bone health is, is superior. These cases, generally I do these cases under a tourniquet, so as far as intraoperative blood loss, it's minimal. So my postoperative protocol is usually dictated by the uh, primary procedure. If it's going to be an arthrodesis procedure, they're going to be non-weight bearing for six to eight weeks. Um, I will occasionally do a bone graft, a small bone graft for a procedure such as a toe arthrodesis where I will let them weight bear immediately and no adverse effects after doing that right after bone graft. Um, on the topic of backfilling, I haven't seen it necessary to backfill. Um, I have not seen stress fractures or any significant reasons to backfill. If you, for some reason, were very concerned about a stress fracture afterwards, there's no reason you can't backfill, but I have not found it necessary in my practice. Okay, at that point, I think we had adequate graft pass it off the field. We just uh, have my assistant in the back table remove the bone graft from the device and then uh, just hand it to me on the field to, to pack it in with a forceps. And here's our uh, graft on the back table. I think we got at least 15 cc's in this case, which was more than adequate for this patient. The closure will be done later in the procedure. We'll irrigate out the uh, wound in standard procedure. Depending on the size of the wound, I may put one deep subcutaneous stitch, like a monocryl, or if it's small, like uh, 10 millimeters, I may just do a nylon closure. I've just been using uh, some glue over the uh, nylons, and that's been working well, cutting down uh, any uh, bleeding through the dressings. So we did not have to um, modify this bone graph on the back table. The way it comes out with the curette is, is nice. It's already in a 
small pieces. We also have it soaked in its own marrow because of the suction device, so it's pretty easy to handle. As far as options for your bone graft, you always have uh, biologics, um, off-the-shelf products. I think uh, autologous bone is still the gold standard. Um, we're getting the cancellous bone and the marrow using the Avedis bone graft harvester. As far as cost, the cost of this device is uh, nominal, minimal compared to some of the bone graft substances that are in the uh, thousands or multiple thousands of dollars. Once again, using the uh, Vetus bone graft harvester, I feel I get the uh, b best bone graft possible. Um, if I am feeling I'm going to need more than about 15 cc's of bone graft, I'll go to the proximal tibia where I could get probably anywhere from 30 to 50 cc's of bone plus the marrow, which is nice with the suction. If I need uh, 15 cc's or less, um, my go-to point would be the calcaneus. Um, the distal tibia is also an option. If you're more comfortable with that, you can get about the same amount of bone from the distal tibia as the calcaneus, maybe a little bit less because I think the calcaneus does have more uh, volume, but both of those would be for uh, a smaller amounts of bone graft. This is the uh, first post-op uh, lateral radiograph of the uh, patient in the harvesting that we harvested about 15 cc's with this standard Avedis uh, bone graft harvester. Um, you can see the extent of uh, bone harvest from inside the calcaneus. You can see the small one centimeter starting hole. Um, once again, we did not um, enlarge the starting hole. We just used the one centimeter starting hole, but this shows you the extent of uh, bone graft that we obtained from inside the calcaneus. Also at her two week post-op uh, visit, her um, incision looks great. No issues with the uh, bone graft site. This is a six week radiograph. You can already see good incorporation of the uh, bone graft filling in her um, tarsal metatarsal spaces. Um, looks like she's going on to early arthrodesis. You can also see the abundance of bone graft we had. Uh, you can see a presence of a little bit uh, uh, extra or bone graft dorsally. Um, that's visible on the lateral radiograph. So she's been non weight bearing in a splint till the two week mark. At this part, point, we place a patient in a cast or a boot brace boot brace at their preference, keep them non-weight bearing to the six week mark. At six weeks, this patient, I'm allowing her to partial weight bear in the boot brace to progress to weight bearing is tolerated over the next two to four weeks. Here she is, she's four months out, arthrodesis looks healed, hardware is in good alignment, no signs of loosening. At this point out, she's in a regular shoe wear, she has been for about a month and using just a uh, stiff carbon fiber type insole. On the lateral view, you can still you can see uh, the bone graft harvest site. Uh, no issues there. No stress fractures. On the AP view, you can see nice fill of the arthrodesis site with uh, bone graft and healing. Patient's pain is much improved. She's doing physical therapy. Overall, doing well.